श्री योगी राम सुरत कुमार के today being a very auspicious day by the hindu calendar with the movement of the sun and moon they fix the first month the first day and it happens to be today and it's a faith among the hindus it matters how you spend the first day so that the whole of the year would follow this auspiciousness it follow the auspicious activities that we do the very first day it's also a day for our prayer prayer for our health happiness success and long life today they would also keep in the plate the mangoes the bananas the jack fruit they are considered very very auspicious and then all those the turmeric kumkum chandan and then the ornaments the golden ornaments and then a mirror would also be kept when you wake up the first thing that you do is you see these auspicious things believing that the whole day will be auspicious and every day that follows it till the end of the year so that looking at the ornaments would fetch income well and the mirror she ramana maharishi used to say the great mahatmas are like mirror the mirror does not reflect any particular figure all the time whatever is in front of it it reflects it the great gyanis they hold the high power of the god and the miracles that happen around them happen automatically if anyone should go and pray in their presence by automatic reflection the grace the power of the great master would immediately grant that prayer this is the highest interpretation of a mirror that is why the great masters none of the great masters worn up the miracles they always say it is the spontaneous effect of their prayers in the presence of the huge power So on this day 
it's very important that we pray for the health of all the people, especially in the present situation. And of course, happiness and success and long life. So in the presence of Bhagwan Smuti here, the ashram wishes everyone the health, happiness, success and long life. And above all, prosperity. The today's situation demands, and of course always, even otherwise, we need income. So many people have lost jobs. So many people have, do not have enough money even to get two meals a day or one meal a day, or not even one meal. So we pray to the Goddess of Wealth for her compassionate glance upon everyone. Now, we shall shift our vision to another place, the Sanadi Street House. Bhagwan is seated with Agaram Jairaman. We shall relive the space and time with Bhagwan and the devotees around. Bhagwan said that contentment is very, very important. If you have contentment in life, you have everything. Even the little that you possess, you feel contented. That is the greatest virtue. No matter how much wealth you have, if you are still discontent, then what is the use? It could only mean you have no possessions at all. So Bhagwan is saying, advising the people around, practice this contentment. God has given you so many things already, so many blessings. He went on to say, Lord Kubera, He is the God of wealth. All the wealth in the whole cosmos is with Him. But you see, He is still not contented with that. Even he has his share of grumbling. So how can you say he's wealthy? It is only the man who is content with whatever we have can be called the richest. The man who has so much wealth and still grumble and complain and always express the lack of something, he is the poorest. And then Bhagavan went on to say something very important. He said, during independence war, so many people had participated in the freedom struggle. Many people had lost their lives. Many people went through tortures in the hands of the foreigners. Many, many, many people had sacrificed everything for the sake of the independence of India. But they were all happy and content when Mahatma Gandhi was recognized 
as the father of the nation. When the whole world recognized the sacrifice of Mahatma Gandhi, they were very happy that Mahatma Gandhi was recognized. When people said it was his sacrifice that laid the foundation for independence, they were so happy with it, they were one with Mahatma Gandhi and so happy with the recognition of his sacrifice. He said, this is contentment. Just see, many people had sacrificed even more, yet they did not mind being unrecognized. It was enough that Mahatma Gandhi was recognized and they felt on with him. My father is all appreciation for these people. And then Bhagwan went on to say, if you have a palatial building, it looks so well decorated, there are ornamental structures, huge pillars. As soon as people visited, they would be all appreciation for the ornamental structures and the pillars. Nobody would bother about the foundation of the building. The pillars of the ornamental structures could not be there, could not stand there without the foundation. But nobody ever bothered to praise the foundation, even to mention, so much as mention it, on which all these ornamental structures stand. So Bhagavan went on to say, there are people like that who did not mind not being recognized by the world. They are contented that they have done, they have done the appropriate action, they have made the sacrifice. The very sacrifice is its own fulfillment. They do not expect anything more. They do not lack anything to express. This contentment is the richness of their life. What a beautiful saying from Bhagwan. So on this auspicious day, let us learn how to be content whatever we possess already, all the blessings that we have received from God till today, they are very much with us. So let us not grumble, complain, rather accept in whatever situation we are placed from moment to moment accept it as God's grace and be content. Bhagwan used to make us sing the song Kurayundru Millai Marimurti Kanna I have no complaints, I have nothing, I have no lack of anything, I have no complaints. You are there to give me whatever I need. You may not give me what I want, but you definitely give me whatever I need. So I have no complaints. I do not lack anything. This is a beautiful sadhana, always feeling contentment. And the contentment is its own fulfillment.
And then that's another interesting scene. Sri Jai Raman was saying about the power of the planets. You see today, today's world, much of the world revolves around astrology. People hang around where the predictions are made. So Sri Jai Raman was saying the Navagrahas, the position of the planets, decide the fate of a being. Bhagwan said, Oh, Jai Rama, the planets have such power, Jai Rama. They affect everybody's life. And then after this, Bhagwan said, What shall we do, Jai Rama, if the planets affect us negatively? Do you think that everybody's life is run only according to the positions of the planets? Then Agaram Jai Raman said, No, Swami, mostly it is so. But then the one who has got Guru's blessings, the one who has got Ishtadevata's blessings, they will not be affected seriously by the positions of the planets. The blessings of the Guru are the supreme power before which even the planets are powerless. And then he went on to say how his sister Lilavati, she was 36 years, not getting married and everybody was worried her horoscope was saying that three rounds of Jupiter and they did not have enough power to get her married and the fourth round there was absolutely no chance at all for her to get married. Very decisively the astrologers had said that this horoscope her holds no chance for marriage at all. When Sri Jnanandagiri Swami of Tapovanam heard it, don't forget there is a higher power, a power higher than these planets. I will show you how when the discussion was happening in February 1973, This was happening and people, the astrologers were saying that Leelavati would not get married at all. All the chances are over. Shigyananda Giri Swami found a suitable bridegroom for her and in May she got happily married under the arrangement, the divine arrangement of Shigyananda Giri of the poem. So Jai Raman said, Swamiji, if we have Guru's blessings, the planets will not have power over us. So what matters most is only the blessings from the Guru. Then Bhagwan played an act that is an attack. He said, Oh Jai Rama, you see Jai Rama, if you have Guru's blessings that the planets do not affect us, we don't have to suffer so much. So will you please tell Sri Jnanananda Giri Swami to bless this beggar so that this beggar will not have to suffer anymore. You see, my Guru's blessings are not powerful Jai Rama. This beggar doesn't deserve powerful blessings of the Guru, so this beggar is suffering and suffering and suffering. Will you not tell Shigyanananda Swami to bless this beggar so that this beggar's life would be problem-free? 
And he kept on saying after that, Jayarama has all the blessings of Vishy Gyananda Swami. He's got the powerful blessings of his Guru. So nothing will affect Jayarama. Jayarama doesn't have to fear anything. He doesn't have to worry about anything. Sri Gyananda Giri Swami's blessings are there always to protect him, to keep him peaceful and joyful. So Bhagavan went on declaring it again and again. Suddenly, Sri Jairaman blurted. He said, Swamiji, you are talking about only Sri Gyananda Giri Swami's blessings. I believe that I have your blessings all the time with me. What about your blessings? Don't I have your blessings? You are talking only about Sri Gyananda Giri Swami? As soon as he heard, Bhagwan burst out laughing. He said, Jai Rama, you think you have this beggar's blessings, Jai Rama? And then he raised his hand, he laughed, he raised his hand in benediction and then continued to say, Jai Rama has Gyananda Giri Swami's blessings, Jai Rama has this beggar's blessings, Jai Rama has my father's blessings, Jai Rama has all the Gurujan's blessings. And then again he burst out laughing and Sri Jairaman happily joined him. This is a very enjoyable scene where you see how the planetary positions can be made ineffective by the grace of the Guru. So on any day especially today and of course every day, as soon as you wake up, you look at the picture of the Guru, the picture of Bhagwan Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar, what can be more auspicious than the Guru's grace? As soon as we get up, if you start chanting, the name Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar, you are starting the day auspiciously. What can be more auspicious than this? The Guru Mantra, the Guru's form and Guru Mantra. So the most auspicious, among the auspicious things is our Bhagwan's picture, and Bhagwan's Nama. And let us know, as long as we have Bhagwan's blessings, we have nothing to worry, we have nothing to fear. We must hold on to his Nama, hold on to his form, hold on to his feet, the holy feet. In today's situation, our Bhagwan Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar is here and right in front of us with his raised hand in benediction. In the prevalent situation, let us pray to him soulfully and intensely for his immediate divine intervention in order to free the entire humanity from the dreadful clutches of this Asuric virus and its family, its variants. And Bhagwan, we beg you to bring back normalcy, a dharmic normalcy in every aspect of life, everywhere. It's already one year and it still seems to continue with another variant. One compassionate glance from you. What can the planetary positions do? Today when Pujari Venkat was reading out from 
the almanac, the future, the predictions for this year. He was talking about the planetary, planetary positions all the time and what they are predicting. Now the very almanac is read out in front of the shrine, any shrine, any divine shrine, the shrine of our Bhagwan Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar. Why do we read out the almanac? Because all the negative effects predicted because of the planetary positions for the entire world, for the entire country, will be mitigated very much in the presence of the shine. So it was read out before Bhagwan, and we know by listening to this, Bhagwan would mitigate, would reduce very much all the negative effects of this year and fill our life with His grace. For which sake, we have to fill our life with His Nama. <laughs>